Let's talk about that and more with our leadoff panel tonight, including Masonry Capital Management CIO and Managing Partner Mark Muhlenberg and StoneX Group Chief Strategist Catherine Rooney Vera. Thank you. You got a lot of red on the screen for a green day here. I just want to throw that out there, by the way. Uh, Catherine, you say this is what you call, quote, weaponized FOMO, fear of missing out. What do you mean by that? Yes, and, and I, that's the buzzword that's going around now, not coined by me, but it does make sense when you have, uh, Brian, everything flying, you know, you have emerging markets, you have any risk asset really catching a bid across the board, and there's this indiscriminate buying. So I would be very, very cautious to those who say, you know, pursue the, the, the stellar high flyers of 2023 because they're going to continue in 2024. I'm more hesitant. I think the best trade right now, right now, with the VIX being as low as it is, is to buy protection, very cheap. It's kind of like life insurance, you know? You may not need to use it. Hopefully you don't. But if you have it and you've locked it in pretty cheap, you're very grateful that you did. Yeah, Mark, do you have any kind of an idea? I, I, I talked to somebody in the hedge fund world yesterday. They talked about liquidity. They talked about leverage, quants, falling interest rates, the U.S. dollar. Do we have any ideas? Don't say Santa Claus, please, or you can if you want. What exactly is behind this pretty amazing eight-week run? Yeah, you know, I was watching an interview, Catherine, that you did on the show like six weeks ago, and one of the things you said was uh, it was going to take uh, an accident uh, or, or a blow up for the Fed to move. And I think we had that uh, about the beginning kind of, of November and of October. And, and so the response to that, there were liquidity issues in the long end of the curve. And the response to that was let's weaken the U.S. dollar. And so you've seen that happen. Um, the U.S. dollar started to get weak. Financial conditions started to get accommodative, um, you know, the last kind of seven weeks. Uh, and, and right as that happened, U.S. Treasury yield started to decline. And so I think all of that is linked um, for sure. And I'm not surprised at all uh, uh, what what transpired. And I'm not sure, you know, the next leg of this, I think, is is cuts by the Fed. Um, and, and so that, that could propel this, uh, you know, going forward. There we go. Now, the, the red on the dollar chart and the T-bill yield just comes right out of your sweater. It's just like it was like a perfect <laughs> it was like a perfect flow right there, Mark. Mark, I'm going to come back to you on that because I do want to follow up. Do you think this is mom and pop? that are powering this rally, or as the person I spoke to yesterday believes, this is big institutions taking advantage of what you just said, easing of financial conditions, especially sort of under the hood of the market, and just goosing up these big leveraged bets. I, I, I'm not sure if it's mom and pop. I will just tell you as, you know, uh, as a value investor, like there are a ton of cheap stocks out there Cyclical stocks, things that have beaten up, been beaten up, energy, et cetera. And, and if this continues um, and it portends well for economic growth, all of those things that I just mentioned are going to do really, really well. And so, you know, I yeah. look at this like this is 2000, this is 09, this is fall of 2020. Um, there, are, there are a lot of things to buy. And so I, I think there are other people like me who are seeing the same thing. Is one of those things to buy, Catherine, the small caps? Because people have been buying them up, the but only the last couple of weeks. They literally completely ignored the small caps for about two years, and suddenly they're winning the beauty pageant. It makes sense, Brian, if you're going to play the broadening out trade. You know, as Mark correctly mentioned, that, you know, this was an AI driven boom for 2023. So going into next year, if you're going to play the broadening out trade and you're operating under the assumption that perfect landing or soft landing, is going to happen is in fact currently happening, which you know I, I can I can buy. Um, then that's the trade. The trade is industrials, it's materials, it's energy, it's small caps. Um, but I think the issue is we're going to come into you know potential for reacceleration of inflation if everything goes as planned. So I'm slightly more cautious. I do think that there's a good chance, Mark, that the Fed does start cutting. I wonder, I really wonder how much politics comes into play. I've heard other pundits say they could go as soon as March. March seems premature, but maybe so that they can get as far away from the election as humanly possible. 
Um, but I still think that the first cut would probably come uh, in June of next of the next year. The risk, of course, and it's a rarity where the Federal Reserve cuts so close to an election yeah. in a presidential election well, year. So there's a lot of unknowns here. 